Hi, welcome to the workshop. Today, I'm going to do a very basic video on how to use an embroidery machine. I've had several comments of people that have an embroidery machine um, and that are a little bit afraid to use it, um, that, they will, that they want somebody to help them learn how to use it, that they don't know what a lot of the whistles and bells are on it and everything. So I thought I need to just step back a minute and start at the very, very basics of using an embroidery machine. Well, the one that I have is a Brother, a Novus NQ1600E, and that's the one that we're going to be talking mainly about today, but a lot of what I'm going to show you will apply to other embroidery machines as well. Maybe some of the pictures will be a little bit different, and some of the wording may be a little bit different, but Basically, all machines do pretty much the same thing, and the instructions will be pretty much the same with each different machine. But we're going to be working on a Brother um, Anova 1600E machine today. But what I want to do is walk you through step by step from turning it on to completing a design that is already incorporated into the machine um, that we'll be using. Um, and it's just going to be a sample, but it's hopefully going to give you um, enough confidence that you can jump into your machine and try things and see what you can come up with on your own. All I've got um, is I'm using a square, just a scrap, of, and this is actually a drop cloth, a painting drop cloth. Um, and I usually always try to keep a, a drop cloth around just because, well, first of all, I paint some too, but also it's just good uh, canvas material that's good to practice on or, or do whatever with. And this is the whole square that I've got. And this is actually the design that we're going to be making. So you can see it's it's pretty. It's a very pretty design, um, and that's something that was already built into my machine um, that um, that I was able to choose. And I'll show you the process of going through all of that too. Um, so let's get into what we'll need. So you'll need a, a scrap of fabric. And just for knowledge, one thing I did is I went after I cut my drop cloth, I went through and searched the ends. Or the edges of it so that's what all of that is on there because they do tend to fray a little bit uh, so but what you'll need is you'll need a pretty good size um, piece of, of fabric that you're going to embroider on you'll obviously need your embroidery thread you'll need your hoop and we're going to be using our five by seven hoop and as you've heard me say before my hoops are not the cleanest They've got a little bit of fuzz on them and they've been used, so sorry about that. Uh, you'll need a piece of stabilizer, and this is um, a tearaway stabilizer. I buy these by the package on Amazon. They're already pre-cut. Uh, I'll put a link to them down in the comment set or the description section down below. It's just so much easier, um, I think, to buy a pre-cut. Your little scissors, uh, you'll need those, or just a pair of scissors to have. I like to use these. They're curved so that you can get in close, you know, when you're clipping threads or anything. They're by Fisker. You can get them at um, almost any craft store. I bought mine at, I uh, believe I got them at Joann's. I like to go there just simply because they accept coupons and they have a lot of coupons. Just a little side note. So, um, but you can also get them um, at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Uh, you can get them at Walmart. Really anywhere that sells scissors, you can get them. 
I like to keep a pair of tweezers at my embroidery station. Let's see. There's something else. Oh, here it is. And we're going to be using um, this um, spray, spray adhesive. We'll talk about that just a little bit more, too, in the video. Uh, this also came from Joann's. And you're going to need just a little bit of creativity. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be very easy to do. Uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got my embroidery hoop laid out on my mat. Please excuse the sticky and everything on my embroidery mat and my cutting mat. They are well used. Um, and that's just that. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your stabilizer and you're going to put it in your embroidery hoop. So I'm trying to do this and hold my phone at the same time. The first thing you want to do is unscrew the embroidery hoop just a little bit and you're going to take this inner part out. Then take your stabilizer put it in your hoop just like this and put the top part of the hoop back on so basically what you're doing is you're putting a you're making a sandwich out of the stabilizer it's going between the two pieces of the hoop and then this is going to fit right back down in like that there you go just like that and then you're going to tighten up the screw just to make sure that it's good and secured and you can get it pretty tight you don't need to just really crank it down but just get it tight enough that it's going to stay together so there now you've got your stabilizer hooped inside your hoop you've just made a stabilizer sandwich Now, let me say at this point, there are actually two ways that you can put your fabric on your stabilizer. You can include it in your stabilizer sandwich, okay? You can, you can put it, put your fabric down on top of your stabilizer and then put the second part of the hoop on there and hoop it all together like that, um, which that works and that's what I did at first when I first started embroidering. Um, I did find that it was a little bit more difficult um, to get the hoop in there and I was afraid I would move the fabric around too much and wouldn't have the placement exactly where I wanted it on what I was doing. So what I have started doing with the majority, well, I'm going to take that back with pretty much everything I embroider, is I float my fabric on top of of the stabilizer and now what that means is let me show you okay what that means is I've got my I'm sorry my phone's a little um, I can't hold it still um, I've got my stabilizer in my hoop here and I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm just gonna lay it on top like this wherever I want it say if I was going to embroider something here on the side I could put it there um, typically you're going to be embroidered you're going to be centering something and you're not going to be on the edge of something like this so you just kind of pull it over to where it is you want your item embroidered okay but since this is just um, going to be a sample we're just it's our first try we're just now doing this for the first time. You don't want to really do anything on a project that you're gonna give to someone or sell or whatever like this. This is just your first practice and you're just kind of trying to figure out how to go about this thing and use this awesome machine that you've got. Okay, if you're going to um, float your fabric on your stabilizer, which like I said is what I typically do, um, just because it's so much easier and I can be assured of the placement of where I'm putting my design or, or whatever. I just feel like I have a little bit better control doing that. And it's not hard. And there's nothing wrong with doing it like that. Um, you can use the spray adhesive. 
Um, and I got this at Joann's. You can get it, you know, pretty much at any um, crafting store. Uh, spray adhesive. And it'll tell you on here that it's for sewing, hand quilting, machine quilting, applique, and machine embroidery. That's actually what made some of the yuck on my embroidery hoop is where I've just gotten some adhesive on it and then some fabric stuck to it and different things. Anyway, it's real easy to clean off, but anyway. Use the spray adhesive. And see, here's my here's my hoop. So I'm just going to spray a little bit on there. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And I'm going to lay my piece of fabric down. Um, and just kind of press it down. I mean, not press it, but I mean, you know, so that it's down there really good. It's on there. And see, that's going to hold that on. Another thing that I do, um, if I've uh, got a lot of extra hanging off to the side or anything, is I'll use some pins, just regular um, straight pins. I just, I like the big tall ones. But, um, what I do is I'll put just right up here at the very top, just right next to my frame, I'll put a pin oops, in there, and then I'll put another one down here at the bottom. Let's see? Just like that, and that way I know I've got my fabric held down and it's not going to be moving around in my machine. Let me turn my phone. And see, I've got one up here and one down here, and I've got it right against the, the, the edge of the frame. And so I know I'm not going to be using that much um, of my fabric, and so my machine's not going to hit it. And that's just a good placement for my pins to be. Okay. Now, let's go to our machine. Okay, as I said, I have um, a brother, a Novus NQ1600E machine, just like that. It's a single needle, and I've had it for about two years. So, the first thing we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna come over here to the side, and turn it on. And as you turn it on, you know, the light's gonna come on, it's gonna come up here on the screen, and you're gonna have um, a screen just like this. At this point, all you're gonna do to, to get it started, and this is where a little bit of the noise comes in, okay? You tap it, and did you hear that little noise it made? That's normal, that's gonna do that. That's just the machine starting up and it's gonna give you instructions, okay? And all it's gonna say is the carriage over here, this being the carriage, okay? It's gonna move after you push this and that's just it completing the setup, um, the setup of itself, of the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and touch that and then there's gonna be another noise, you'll hear it. See, that's all it does. And all that does is tell you, okay, now I'm ready for you to pick what we're gonna do. So today, since this is gonna be our very first project um, on our machine after we've got it, nine times out of 10, people are gonna want to go through all the designs and the alphabet and just see what's there, what's what comes included in your machine. So let's do that right now, okay? Let's go up here to the first one and we're gonna touch that. Um, and let me say right here at this point, I know that um, there are several other different types of machines out there. There's Brother, Janome, Baby Lock. There's a, a bunch of different ones. And um, what I'm showing you now is a Brother. Um, but I assume that all of the machines have similar 
controls, okay? They may not be exact, but they're similar, okay? So these are the three categories of designs that you've got in your machine, pre-built into your machine. So let's just pick this first one and we'll touch on that, okay? And see, here's four that it shows you. But if you look right up here, see how it says one over 18? So this is showing you page one of 18 pages. Now, if you look right here, you see the arrows where you can go forwards and backwards? You can push those arrows, which are right down here, and you can scroll, scroll through. So see, now it's two of 18. So it's showing you page two of 18 pages of designs under this category, okay? So we'll just scroll through and see what else here. And we're not gonna go through the whole 18. We'll go through one more. So far, I don't see anything I like. So I wanna go back to the original menu that came up whenever I first turned my machine on. This right here is your back button. So push that, and that's gonna take you right back to this first page. So then you have this category here, and that's four buttonholes, okay? Same thing, over here you've got one of three pages. Here are your buttonholes that it can make, and you're gonna scroll through just to see what's there. We're not really gonna make a buttonhole today but it's a brand new machine and you wanna know what all's on there. So now we're back to page one. We're gonna push back again to go back to our designs. This one, let's go back just one second. This one, if you can see, it's got buttonholes in it, but there's designs that you can put around the buttonholes. So let's push that and just to see what's there. And we've got one of three pages, so we're going to scroll through just to see what's there, okay? And those are pretty cool. So now let's go back, and we're going to go, this is the main design menu, but there was a main main menu that first came up, so we want to go to that, so we're going to press back again. And here we are at the very beginning. So we've looked at the designs, there's other designs here. So let's pick that one. That's one of 14 pages. We've got the arrows up here, one of 14 pages. So we're gonna scroll through and see what's there and see if we find something that we like. Okay, there's a lot of different things in there. You've got you know, flowers and, and uh, ocean life and just different things. Here's birthday numbers for a birthday design, um, cute baby designs, just a whole lot of stuff in here that you could choose from. I'm not real sure about it yet, so I want to go back and look at one I saw on another page, but we're at the end, so we're going to come down here and press back, and now this is going to take you back, okay? And again, these are all designs that are in built in the machine. You don't have to purchase these additionally or anything. These are already preset in the machine that you can use um, whenever you want to. Um, let's pick one. I thought I saw a heart in here, up here. Okay, let's pick the heart. So we're gonna tap on that and see how it moved it from here over into this area. This area here is like your um, workspace. That's like your hoop, okay? This is the design here. So we've got it placed over here. At this point, we wanna come over here and press set, okay? As we did that, see, it still kept it over here in the workspace, but we've got all of these different settings over here that we need to go through. And that's what blew my mind when I first um, was doing my first project um, on my, my, my embroidery machine, because each new screen it had seemed to have a lot of different 
options on there and I wasn't sure what they were and I didn't know how to use them so uh, it was quite daunting but I can assure you this really isn't that that hard to do okay so we've got our we've got our heart in here and you can look right up here and it's showing you on the hoops that you've got that you can the hoop sizes that you want to use from your smallest up to your largest and it tells you the measurements here this is 2.85 by 2.92 so that's going to be a teeny heart so we want to make it a little bit bigger so what we're going to do is find this size button and it gives you all the options of how you want to widen this and I want to widen it out equally on all four sides so I'm just going to follow the arrows and press that out press that button out as far as I want to make it and see it's changed the size up here as well as making it a little bit larger here um, on the, uh, the display the workspace so you can see so let's do it one more time well let's do it maybe two more times okay so there we've got it's 3.24 by 3.32 and that looks good that's about the size that I want it so we've got it sized how we want it and we're gonna press OK now at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hoop and I'm just laying it up there for a minute so I can switch hands with my phone pull this side back just a little bit and see here is the edge of my hoop okay this is always going to go right here on this edge and we're going to fold that down just a little bit so that our needle can slide up under there we're going to fit this in and push it all the way in and you'll hear it click, a, not really a loud click, but it'll kind of click a little bit. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. Wait just a second. Until you've got it all the way in. See, it's, it's all the way in here. And then at this point, push that button down. That's gonna lock your hoop in place and let your machine know, okay, she's got a hoop in here and she's ready to go. And we'll flip this over back like that and then I've got all of my fabric down on my machine how I want it. At this point we're going to come back over here we've got our design how we want it we've got it the size we want it we don't want to do anything else to our design oh let's see wait a minute let's add our name to the heart okay so we'll go down here to add push the add button it's going to come right back up here to this very first um, screen that we saw and let's pick a font it's page one of two fonts that are already preloaded in your machine so let's page over and see what else is there and pick a font that we want to use we're going to add our name um, so let's use this one press that or choose whichever one you want to use you know press that and then you're going to come up it's going to come up here um, with all of your alphabet so uh, you're going to go through and find the letters of your name and my name is Susan so do an S page over U Whoops, I passed it. S, A, N. And we've got my name in here, how, you know, how I spell it. Uh, large, medium, or small font. And so I'm gonna leave it at large and we'll see how big that is, okay? After we've got that done, press set. And see how it's put my name over top of the heart so we don't want to embroider it that way we want to change it so we're going to move it come up here to the move button 
and see you've got this directional pattern. We're going to move it down and we're just going to push this down button. Okay, just like that. And then after we've got our name placed where we want it, we'll press OK. Okay. Now, what if I decided that I didn't want my name that big? Okay, let's go to size. See, we've come back up to this size thing, so you can manually size it if you want to, like we did the size of the heart. Or you can come over here and just press M for medium and see how it made my name smaller. And you could even press small for small, and that makes it just tiny, tiny. So it looks like maybe the large wasn't that bad after all. So I'm going to press large, and that brings it back to the size that it was originally, and that's going to be okay for our sample. So I'm going to press okay. Everything's basically where I want it for this first sample, and I'm ready to try this machine out and want to go. So we're going to press end edit. And see, if you heard, as I pressed end edit, it kind of moved a little bit. That's normal. After you get to end edit, you've got these other options here. Um, so let's talk about those just briefly. Here's the move button again. You can move the whole design because the machine now has made the design one design. Okay, you can move it all at one time. You can move it down. Um, but I mean, it was okay where it was, so we're gonna leave it there. You can press this button. And what that does, let's go back, I didn't, I didn't, um, this is just, it shows just like a needle on a, uh, an X here. Um, so let's press it to see what it is. And it shows you all of the sides of your design. You've got your four corners, the sides, and then you've got the middle. So it's set on middle, so we'll press OK. And if you look over here on your fabric, it's set pretty much in the middle, okay? So let's come back over here and press it again. Let's press this top corner and see what it does. See the X on your work surface up here where that moved? See over here on your machine, it moved to the top of where your design will be on your fabric, okay? But we want to keep it in the middle. Just you can you can keep it wherever you want to. I just like to keep it in the middle. That way, see here on my fabric, and I can look here on my uh, workspace here on the embroidery machine. There's the green X right there, and that shows you that the needle placement on the fabric is in the very center of my design. Okay, so then we'll press OK. This is the one that I found to be really helpful. This button right here. See how it just shows the broken arrow going around. So let's press that. And again, you have the design, uh, the uh, designation of all the four corners and the four sides in the center. Again, it's set in the center but I want to go around my design and see exactly where it's going to be on my fabric. So I'm going to press this button and I'm going to move my camera over to my fabric so you can see what it does after pressing this button. So let's watch. Okay, what that did, and I'm sure you saw, but just, just so we can touch on it and you know um, exactly what it is that it did, it went all around exactly where my design is going to go on my fabric, okay? 
it just kind of traces it out and that way you can see um, especially if you're doing something and you need to design in a specific place or whatever you can see exactly where your design is going to go and you can start from anywhere on your design it's preset to start in the center but if you want to check the top I'm going to press this top button and watch see that goes to the top of your design so you look up here and the X is here at the top and if you press the bottom it's going to go to the bottom of your design and just as a tip that's another good thing to use if you put pins in your hoop you can look and see see how I've got my pin placed down here at the bottom I know that my machine is not going to hit that pin and the same thing with the top. If I press top, it's going to be up here, and I know it's not going to hit my pin. And if I go to the side, it's going to come right here. To the other side, it's going to come right here. See? And then back to the center. So that's okay. It's exactly where I want it. It's going to it's going to do its thing all out exactly where it should so I'm going to press OK. Okay. So just I have found that this is a very 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 handy um, option um, to use when you're doing your designs. Now at this point we've got it set up how we want it, we've got it placed where we want it so we're going to press embroidery. Okay. Then what comes up is it shows your design exactly how it's going to be. It shows the different steps it's going to take to do it. The first part, it's going to take four minutes. The second part, it's going to take one minute. And then the third part, which is our name, that's going to take four minutes. Now let's talk about this just one more minute. Each separate part as it's doing this first step, that's going to do, more than likely, it's going to do the outside of, or the inside, excuse me, the inside of the design. So you can do it all one color, you can do it different colors, um, that's totally up to you, it's your design and this is where your creativity comes in too. So use your imagination and do it however you want to. So you can use all one color or all two colors, but after it does this inside part of the design, it'll stop, and I'll show you that during the process, okay? So now what we're going to do is pick our, pick our colors, and I've got my colors picked out here. I've got my three colors picked out. This is going to be the inside design. This is going to be the outside design. And this is going to be my name, just simply because I'm such a blue person. I love blue, so. Um, but I'm going with traditional colors for the heart. So now we're going to need to thread our machine. So come up here and lift this up. And you've got the little stopper thing on here. I know the guy at the store where I bought my machine. Um, said he never uses this. I always do. Um, I don't know the advantage or disadvantage of not using it. Um, I just figure it's in there for a reason, so I always use it. And I'm going to try to uh, thread this machine and hold my phone at the same time. And that's probably going to prove to be pretty interesting. So let's see. I've got Pops coming up here to hold the phone for me while I record, but while he, while we're waiting for him to come up here, uh, let's go over just a few more of these uh, numbers that are on my machine. Like I said, they're probably, if you don't have a brother, they're somewhere on yours somewhere, and I'm not positive that they're going to play out or they're going to show up on this particular screen. More than likely, they will, though. This is showing you that there's 4,834 stitches in this total design. It's going to take approximately eight minutes to do, and there's going to be three color changes, okay? Here comes Pop. The first thing you're going to do is just put your thread on the spool, 
take your little doodah thing and snap and put it there on on the end of the spool pretty snugly. You don't want it too tight, but you want it on there where it's going to stay. And then I just find it easier to use two hands to do this. And your machine's going to be numbered in the steps that you're going to do, and it's going to have the broken arrows there, see, to tell you what steps you need to take. So my thread's going to go through here, follow the arrows. It's going to come down. I can't get my hand out of the way. And around this way, through there. And I always come back over here to my hand, just with this hand, just a minute. I always kind of hold on to it here because this thread's slick and you can pull too much out or whatever, but I always try to keep that hand on there and hold it. Okay, back over here, see the air shows down. We're going to come back down and loop around this part down here at the bottom. See, it comes back up here at the top, and there's a little hook in there. You can see it. Um, you just have to trust that it's there. Pull it back down, and then down here. Uh, and I'm kind of at a weird angle, so I'm having a hard time. If you look right here, can you, can you see that? Here's what I'm going at. There's a little hook right here. I'm gonna hook my thread through that. See, did you, I don't know that you could hear it click, but it clicks into that hoop, okay? Hold the phone up just a little bit, there. okay? And then it comes through over here. And see if you can, can you see? It's on number seven. It's gonna come through there and through number seven, okay? And then most most machines will have a cutter here on the end. I'm at a weird angle, so I don't know that I'm gonna hit it, that you kind of loop it around and you just pull it and that's gonna cut the tail off. This lever on the side is what's gonna thread your needle. So you push this down and see it comes down and it threads your needle. See that? Now keep the keep the camera on the needle just a minute. Let's do it again so you can see exactly what it does. Push that down and it pops that over and it threads the needle. Okay? Okay, I'm not sure how helpful that was because it's kind of hard to do it. <laughs> Pops was holding the phone and <laughs> my hands kept getting in the way. But anyway, so we've got our needle threaded. Uh, we've got our machine, uh, we've got our design in here where we want it. Everything's placed exactly where you want it. I um, know I was a little bit uncomfortable at first with having any fabric or anything laying over top of the carriage. And if you want to, you can just kind of put that right there, fold it over right there and get another pin and just pin it in place so it's totally out of the way of your carriage over here. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now we're gonna come back over here to our control panel, uh, for lack of a better word, and it's ready to go. So on my machine, others may be different. Um, you know, just keep that in mind. This is on a brother machine. Others may be different but I'm sure they're all very similar. You press this button here, and it's gonna ask, or it's gonna tell you, okay, it's gonna automatically lower the presser foot, so we're gonna press okay, and watch. It lowers the presser foot. Okay, so you, then you've got this design here. You look over here at your machine, see how you've got a red button here? You know, of course, red means stop. Come back over. We're going to press this button and it's ready to go. And if you look over here, you've got the green green light here. Green obviously means go, so we're going to press this. And when we press this, it's going to start doing the design. Okay? Let's get that. Maybe. 
here you can see the count stitches. The count stitch, uh, stitching count as it goes up. You're on the first of three stops. And this one's going to take about four minutes. Okay, obviously I was wrong about, I was thinking the whole inside would be light, uh, light uh, I was going to do the whole inside light pink and the outside would be red, obviously I was wrong, but that's okay. So we're going to come back over here and you see, after it stopped, it's taken away that first step that we just did. So the next thing it's going to do is the second color and it looks like it's going to be the two flowers, okay? Um, and it's going to take one minute to do. Just as a note, if you look, you can tell it's already done 2,403 stitches, okay? And you're on the second thread color or second stop within the, the ones that it has to do, okay? And you, at this point, you can either change your thread and use a different color or you can keep it the same. If you keep it the same, all you need to do is press this button um, here uh, to, to lower the presser foot and um, press green again to go and it'll continue on and it'll be the same color. Or you can, um, at this point, take your thread out and change the color and you can do it another color and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to change it Okay, I've changed my color. I'm doing dark red. Um, I've got it down here, and I know that that video of, of me, uh, or that part of it, of me uh, threading machine was hard to film, but truly, if you'll just follow the arrows, and after a couple of times, you'll have it down to where you can do it in just a snap, but I've got my thread all the way through here, and I'm going to pull the lever down again to thread the needle. See, there it goes. I'm going to come back over here, press that, it's going to tell you again, you want to automatically lower your presser foot, okay. We're going to press that button one more time, that turns green, and there it goes. finished with the second step and see it's removed it here from the menu over here and it's ready to do the last step. Again you can do it all in that second color if you want to or you can change the color that's totally up to you um, but I'm going to change the color. Okay I've changed the color I've got my blue up there um, I've got it down here and I'm ready to thread the needle push the button down thread the needle we're going to come over here and press that. Yes, we want to lower the presser foot. Press OK. Press it one more time. And then we've got our green light. Anytime you see the green light on, you know it's ready to go. Okay, it's just, it's waiting for you. It's ready to go. So we'll push the green, and now it's going to do my name. Now, I'd want to 
take a minute here just to show you what I did. If I don't like to leave my machine running if I'm not right in the room with it. So if I have to, I don't know, go run an errand, if I have to use the restroom, anything like that, I always stop my machine. So if you need to stop for any reason in the middle of your design, all you have to do is push this green button, okay? And it'll stop it. It's still green, it's still ready to go, but you can push that and it's gonna stop it. Say I, 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 I needed to, to um, stop altogether and take this hoop out for some reason or whatever, you just need to stop. See these three buttons up here? That's where these are going to come, come in handy. What you want to do, if I wanted to cut this thread and just stop right here, I could come up here and press this button, which is going to raise my presser foot up. I could press this button, which is going to cut my thread. Or I could press, push this button, and that's going to raise my needle up. And at this point, that's what I need to do. I need to raise my needle up. See how it raised my needle up? Then I'm going to cut the thread, push this button, and see it cut the thread. Okay? And we're back to red. It's not ready to go yet. Okay? Um, there's no need to have to stop this. I just wanted to show you what these three buttons do. So what we're going to do at this point, we're going to come back over here, press this. Is it okay to lower the presser foot? Yep. So we're going to press OK. Back over here and look. It, the presser foot's back down. We're going to press that button again. And we've got green. So, And it's going to pick up exactly where it left off. finished. So see how this button turned back to red. You know, red means stop. You come right back over here to this main control panel and look. It says finished embroidering with an OK button. So if you press the OK button, it's going to go right back to there. At this point, if you were doing the same design on something over and over again, all you would have to do to do this exact same design again is pull your hoop out, uh, get another hoop ready, put it back in, and then you could come over here and press um, this button here to start it, and the whole process would go would start all over again. So at this point, since I'm through, I'm going to take my hoop out, uh, flip this lever back up, and you can. I might be able to do it one-handed. Slide your hoop out, and there is our finished design. Okay, so now I've taken it out of the hoop, I've got my design on here, and what I'm going to do is take my pins out, and I'm going to go over just a couple of things in a minute of... Um, just some really cool things that it's neat to have around your sewing area, your craft area, um, that come in handy. So I'm going to pull all of this out of the hoop. There's the design, and you know we've put the stabilizer on. This is this this is a tearaway stabilizer, so it tears really easy. So I'm going to tear this stabilizer off. If I can get it started. Okay. 
this is where your little uh, scissors or either ones you want to use I like to use these they're um, they're curved can you see that they're curved they're tiny you can get in close because because of the curve um, and you can go through and snip your let's see can you see snip your little strings off here in the back just to kind of clean it up a little bit get those off of there just like there y'all if your sewing area embroider area craft area whatever is like mine you have got a ton of these little threads just laying around. I know whenever I get through up here and I go back downstairs, I've got threads all over my pants and they're on my socks and just everywhere. And these really bug me, so I do try to go around and get them all off. Now, you know, I mentioned it's good to have tweezers around. See how I didn't get all of the stabilizer can you see right in there and right over here I didn't get them all I didn't get it all out so I'm just going to use my uh, tweezers and get a hold of that and just pull it out really simple you don't have to do this especially if you're uh, embroidering something that um, you know you're going to cover up the back or whatever it's not going to be seen um, but it uh they bug me so I like to get them all off all the little pieces so I take just an extra minute to do that there you go they're all out and there's the finished design so hopefully you were able to do uh, a design along with me um, and you have made your first design on your embroidery machine or maybe it's your second or your third but maybe hopefully I've been able to help you feel just a little bit more comfortable um, using your machine like I said I know when you first take it out of the box it's very daunting um, all those buttons all the noises um, and you wonder, oh my gosh, have I pressed a button and just totally broke it all at first? No, you haven't. They make noises, um, they speed up, they go slower, uh, they squeak, they grunt, they groan, they make noises. Um, and all of that is normal. It's a machine and it's got working parts and so it's gonna make noises. Don't let that throw you off. Don't let that make you afraid of it. Um, any anything like this embroidery sewing using a serger um, anything even painting um, picking out colors all of that it, it's it's a process you know it's a it's a design choice it's creative and that's why you got into this so that you can be creative and you can come up with designs that you like you can uh, mix and match colors you can make mistakes and that's okay um, everybody does so don't freak out if you make a mistake you can just start over like I said at the very beginning some of the best ways to learn things is just to kind of get in it try a couple of samples push some buttons see what it does the machines nowadays are so um, smart that they'll tell you if you can't do something. If you start to, if you press a button and the machine doesn't want to do it, it's going to say stop. You can't do that. You know, you're going to see that red button flash up there, and um, it, it, that's its way of saying stop. Don't do that. Um, if you see that you've made a mistake on something and you you, you don't uh, you don't understand what's going on, keep in mind that control panel that's over there to the side. It's going to tell you what's going on. It's going to tell you what you need to know. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, um, it's creativeness. It's relaxing to me because I can sit up here in my area and 
just create, you know? Think outside of the box sometimes, you know? Our first design, I stuck with safe colors, but I mean, you don't have to use the colors um, that are on there, you know, and, and that are shown on your design. You know, I could have made a bright green heart, you know, with aqua color flowers, or I could have done it all black and gold, or, or pink and purple, or whatever. That's where your creativity comes in. Make sure and use that and enjoy your machine. As always, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope that I've been able to teach you something. Um, now, it's your turn. You go create something on your machine. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.